if more of the population heard more about these subjects, they would vote in ways that went, you know, in a different direction than the direction the country is going right now, right? If voters ultimately choose the course of the nation, what this fear on the part of, you know, the people who have such a tight hold on the system right now, their fear is that the will of the people will actually be enacted and that we will change the course of the country based on what you know, the citizens of the country want if they hear a message that appeals to them. And apparently these interests are afraid that Warren's message will appeal to them. To them. Certainly uh, Rand Paul and his cohorts are appearing to some of the population out there. And, you know, the funny thing about having these candidates on the far left and the far right is I don't necessarily agree with their prescriptions for fixing problems, but they seem to be in a much more free position to point them out and highlight them than the more you know, so-called credible mainstream candidates are, the Hillary Clintons and the Chris Christie's and those types. Because you know we're in an emperor has no clothes kind of situation here, and the only people that seem to be free enough to point that out are the, you know, the Rand Paul libertarian types on one side, and the uh, the the more left leaning anti corporate Wall Street uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street types on the other. I mean, those folks at least are able to identify potential problems. Like I said, we may not agree over their prescription, but when we're in the situation we're in right now, identifying the proper problems is step one anyway. So I want to see um, these people on the non-credible right and the non-credible left get far enough in this process so that these issues, these important issues that they highlight, become enough of the campaign so that the people who likely will win the next election don't escape you know, without having to share either their opinion on it or their promise on it. Now, their opinion might be interesting. Their promise, we know um, from history, is likely uh, worthless. You know, there is one last story I wanted to deal with today, but it's a little gross. So if you happen to be eating breakfast or anything like that, have the kids in the car, I turn this show off now. But the reason I feel the need to share it with you is because I feel like it does a great job, you know, answering one of those questions that people like yours truly constantly have thrown in our face when we talk about, you know, opposition to too much spying and surveillance and whatnot. Um, you know, we called it the auto principle on the last show for Ben's uh, mythical dad. And it's the idea of, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, what have you got to hide? And this story I want to share with you right now is a wonderful example. And remember, an early example. This is where we're on the road to. These kinds of things become more common and worse as time goes on. A wonderful example of why that argument doesn't hold water. Because there are people out there who have nothing to hide at all, but as our you know, ability to shield ourselves behind the veil of protection that things like the Constitution provides us, you begin to see exactly what can happen to you when those protections, you know, become too full of loopholes? In this case, it involves a guy named David Eckert in New Mexico. Now, we should say at the outset, Mr. Eckert is suing, and he's suing the uh, city of, I guess it's Deming, New Mexico. He's suing police officers. Um, he's suing uh, deputies. He's suing the deputy district attorney, and he's suing the regional medical center um, for what they did to him. Uh, he wants a lot of money, obviously. And and what they did to him is the best response you folks will ever hear to, if you have nothing to hide, what do you care? And you may have heard about this story. And, you know, it tends to appear in, um, I mean, the funniest thing is the, is, is the best rundown of what happened to this guy was printed in the Huffington Post. So that's the one I'm using. And remember, these are allegations because he's filing a suit. But apparently he and his lawyer have quite a bit of... Um, you know, evidence and and people who were involved in this, including doctors, maybe who are willing to testify on his behalf. Listen to this story and think about how this could happen to anyone. And then think about how the officials involved in this case thought this was just fine. From the beginning of the piece appeared in um, the Huffington Post, um, November 5th, 2013, and it's entitled, David Eckert appears to clench his buttocks. Cops order enemas, colonoscopy, x-ray for non-existent drugs. From the beginning of the piece, quote, it's not funny. 
A New Mexico man is alleging abuse after authorities conducted three enemas, a colonoscopy, an x-ray, and several cavity searches on him simply because he appeared to clench his buttocks. David Eckert's attorney recently filed a federal lawsuit on his behalf over the January 3rd incident in which police and doctors co-opted in a quote-end-quote unethical 14-hour series of cavity searches, KOB Channel 4 reports. It says court documents state that Eckert was driving out of Walmart in Deming when he failed to fully stop at a parking lot stop sign. He was immediately pulled over. The story says, quote, when he stepped out of his vehicle, an officer reported that he appeared to be clenching his buttocks. That fact was cited as probable cause to suspect that Eckert was hiding narcotics in his anal cavity. Officers obtained a search warrant and Eckert's humiliating examination began at a nearby medical center. All right, if you're not going to turn this off, push the cornflakes to the other side of the table. You have to hear what happened to this guy and realize this is the actual result of things like the Fourth Amendment going by the wayside. This can happen to you, and there's no reason that this won't continue to slide down this road so it happens more often and in more extreme ways. From KOB Channel 4, quote, Eckert's abdominal area was x-rayed. No narcotics were found. Number two, doctors then performed an exam of Eckert's anus with their fingers. No narcotics were found. Number three, doctors performed a second exam of Eckert's anus with their fingers. No narcotics were found. Number four, doctors penetrated Eckert's anus to insert an enema. Eckert was forced to defecate in front of the doctors and police officers. Eckert watched as doctors searched his stool. No narcotics were found. Number five, doctors penetrated Eckert's anus to insert an enema a second time. Eckert was forced to defecate in front of doctors and police officers. Eckert watched as doctors searched his stool. No narcotics were found. Number six, doctors penetrated Eckert's anus to insert an, an enema a third time. Eckert was forced to defecate in front of doctors and police officers. Expert watched as doctors searched his stool. No narcotics were found. Number seven, doctors then x-rayed Eckert again. No narcotics were found. Number eight, doctors prepared Eckert for surgery, sedated him, and then and performed a colonoscopy, where a scope with a camera was inserted into Eckert's anus, rectum, colon, and large intestines. No narcotics were found. Some of these stories say he was then given a $6,000 bill for all the work done on him. Now, let me just say that these are allegations. Um, supposedly uh, bolstered with a bunch of evidence, we'll see. But... Um, if true, this is perhaps the most shocking part of the story. Deming Police Chief Brandon Gigante argued that his officers, quote, follow the law in every aspect, end quote. Well, folks, if that's procedure, if that's okay, and, and it looks like from what I'm reading here that they went to a judge and said, okay, we think he's clenching his buttocks, and supp uh, supposedly they thought he was hiding marijuana, so we're not even talking like heroin stuff here. This is going to be, we're going to ha have a guy who wants to smoke marijuana for personal use, and where does he hide it? Well, you know, just if I'm traveling around town, that's where I put it. Um, apparently a judge signed off on this idea that he may be hiding marijuana because he's standing funny, and that makes... 14 hours of jailhouse check-in searches or worse than that, okay, and legal. If you have nothing to hide, what do you care? I don't know. I don't want to go through 14 hours of hell like that guy. So when we talk about these being important issues, folks, we're not talking about things getting out of hand down the road. They're out of hand now, and they're worse than they were five years ago. Where are they going to be five years from now? That's what lines in the sand are supposed to protect. These ideas of constitutional rights is not some amorphous thing that shouldn't matter to you that seems like something you'll never need. David Eckert's wishing he'd had them in place with more authority, you know, back January 3rd when he got pulled over. Might not have helped him, though. It looks like maybe a judge agreed that, hey, listen, clenching your buttocks, I mean, anybody who does that, yeah, search him for 14 hours with colonoscopies. The good news about this is some people still have some sort of a code. According to Eckert, um, the first doctor that they took him to to try to have everything searched and colonoscopies and everything said no, that it was unethical. And apparently he may be one of the people willing to testify that that's what the doctors were asked to do by the police officers. We'll see where this goes, and I'll try to keep you up to date. But to me, that's the best answer that I can freely and easily name to say, you know, if you have nothing to hide, what do you care? Well, protecting yourself from unreasonable search and seizure um, may sound like nothing, you know, that big of a deal in, in high-minded concept. 
uh, saying you don't have a right to search my anal cavity under most conditions, um, that hits a little bit closer to home, don't you think? <laughs> 